Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi in part two of the restoration of this vintage Action Man Bullet Man figure. Now in part one you saw me sort of basically reconstruct the figure because uh, when it arrived here the arms had been glued on, he was missing all of his fingers and basically just a right mess. I managed to get him sort of back in one piece and since then I've also been to a toy fair and I just by chance happened to find part of his uniform, this sort of the uh, red, I'm going to call it a jumpsuit but it's a bit like a sort of a mini onesie or something like that. I actually managed to find that at a toy fair so I picked that up so he's already starting to look sort of pretty reasonable. He's missing his boots still, he's missing his helmet and he's also missing his belt. Now since that last video I was very kindly uh, contacted by Alan Dawson who runs the Facebook page Armaments in Miniature and he sent me a package that I wasn't expecting to receive and inside that package he included the little jumpsuit. Uh, now this is actually in far better condition than the one I've got on here. This one has a few holes in it so we are going to tidy this up today and uh, make a replacement logo for it because as you can see it's supposed to have a little bullet symbol on the front so we're going to do that. So that's the first very nice uh, thing that uh, Alan sent me and then he also sent me this which is a cast of Bullet Man's helmet. So uh, what Alan has done is taken an original helmet and made a mould of it and then cast it in, uh, I'm going to say it's a, some sort of resin but he said it's filled with little foam balls or something to make it a little bit softer and he's very kindly sent me uh, one of these to uh, have a go at sort of getting ready to put on Bullet Man. As you can see this has uh, been cast so that the eye holes are actually filled in. I've already started to work on this, you can see I've cut out that eye hole but we'll get the other eye hole cut out and then we are going to uh, work out how to get this chromed. I've got a couple of ways I'm going to try uh, so we'll get onto that later in the video. The first thing that I want to do is actually get this uniform form sort of uh, so it's in a, a usable state and also make a belt because bullet man's supposed to have a black uh, elastic belt that goes across there and I bought the elastic as you can see here so we're going to make that as well so let's get started on this restoration. So here you can see uh, Bullet Man's two uniforms that I have. This is the one that Alan very kindly sent me. It's actually in much better condition. It has a few little sort of bobbles on it, but that's just the type of material. Uh, there are no bits missing on it. Nothing looks like it actually needs sewing up. There's a few little straggly ends of uh, thread which we can easily cut off. I've got a small pair of scissors here, so I'm just going to sort of trim those up just to make the uniform look a bit neater. There's another one there on the back. Overall though it is in very nice condition, it doesn't seem to have any holes in it. The one I picked up at the Toy Fair you can see it's getting a little bit threadbare. If you've ever collected six million dollar man outfits you'll know they have the same sort of problem, you get little thin holes in them. I think this guy had quite a few all over him, you can see on the back as well there where these sort of blue pants are starting to show through. So this outfit is much nicer but it is missing the emblem that should be on the front, this little bullet symbol. Uh, so we're going to uh, recreate that and the first thing I need to do is make a version of this that we can print out. So I scanned this in on a flatbed scanner uh, and then I've taken that into Photoshop and basically redrawn it.
After about 20 minutes work, I've ended up with this, uh, which is a sort of my recreation of that little bullet logo. You can see it actually looks uh, much like the original. I tried to get it as close as I possibly can. Now I've printed this out onto uh, iron-on transfer paper, which is why it is back to front. You'll see that my logo is back to front because iron-on transfer paper, uh, you place face down onto some fabric and then iron it on. And what the image looks like in the end is back reversed to how it should be. So you'll see this all the right way round. So what I've done is taken this and I've ironed it onto some uh, sort of plainish cotton fabric, something like a, an old pillowcase would do. And once you've done that ironing and sort of let it heat up, make sure the iron is extra hot because it really does uh, make a difference how hot the iron is and to how well it sticks. After I've done all of that, I've got this. So this is that same little logo. You can see it's now round the right way and this is ironed onto, I'm going to say this is an old pillowcase. I got the fabric off uh, Mrs. Toy Ploy, but you can see uh, it gives a pretty reasonable result and we can hold that up to the original and that's a very close match. Now you'll see when I design my uh, logos and sort of things like that, I always put a little bit around the edge and you have to cut that bit off. The reason I put that bit around the edge is to stop you getting too much of a sort of a white sort of haze or a little white sort of edge when you cut it out. If it's a slightly different color, it tends to hide that. And the way we're going to attach that to Bullet Man is to use some double-sided tape. So I've got so just a normal roll of double-sided tape here. I'll cut a small amount off and we'll stick that on the reverse of this, make sure it's in the right position, like so. And then we can cut this out and it will just stick on really nicely actually. I've done this quite a few times before. If you watch some of my other videos about making capes and things for uh, G.I. Joe's and uh, Superpowers figures, Ken of Superpowers figures, it's exactly the same technique. So just carefully cut this out. Like so. So there's the cut out version of the logo. We can compare that to the original. You can see that's a pretty close match. And you can see there are little white bits around the edge. That's why I put the colour around the edge because it tends to sort of soften that a bit. Actually most of that is going to be the sort of backing to the sticky back uh, tape there. So when we take that off it should look fine. And we can now stick that onto the uniform. So again all you've got to do, take off the backing. Easier said than done sometimes. There we go. We can now line this up. Looks like it's got to be just a little way down from the neckline, bang in the middle. And there we go. I think that looks really good. So I'm going to swap these two uniforms over and then we can get on with making the belt. Now Bullet Man should also come with a black belt that wraps around his waist there and that uses the same latches that all uh, Action Man belts use which are these tiny little uh, metal sort of hooks uh, and I could I think people do make replacements of them but I uh, didn't bother to sort of get any because I've got quite a lot of these belts so I'm actually going to sacrifice one of these to make the proper belt for Bullet Man. Now Bullet Man's belt is made out of 11 millimeter black elastic so I've again just picked up some of this black elastic. Uh, this was fairly cheap. I've got two meters here and I think it costs £1.50 including postage. So all I'm going to do is make myself a new belt using the little latches and hooks off uh, this uh, vintage belt. Should be fairly simple to do. A little bit of uh, trimming here and I'm going to make it so that if I ever want to remake this belt I can. So at the top of these you can see there's a fine bit of stitching. You can just see it there. It's that darker uh, thread. So I'm going to trim that and sort of chop it so that I can take uh, the end of this off without damaging the rest of the belt. And if I want to remake this in the future I can but for now I'm going to use this to make my bullet man belt you know one day I might find an original one but for now I'm going to make it just because it's uh, so straightforward to do. So let's get uh, these little bits of thread chopped off and then uh, we can uh, construct our new belt. So I've got myself a little length of the elastic and I'm going to sew uh, this little eyelet end onto that and then once that's sewn in place we'll work out the exact length that the belt needs to be because I actually think it needs to be a little bit sort of tighter than a normal belt. I put a normal belt on, it feels a little bit baggy so if I make this a bit tighter the elastic should hold it in place and it'll be a nice snug fit. First thing though, let's get these uh, ends sewn on.
Now that first end is sewn in place we can work out how long we need this to be and I can say I'm going to make it just a little bit shorter because I think it will work better if there's a bit of tension there it sort of pulls in around a uh, bullet man's waist so I'm going to sort of guess that about that length will do so I'll just put my hand there we can thread on the other end we want to make sure the end is round the right way so I'm making sure everything is sewn in properly then we can push that in thread that down and I'm going to say it's about there so I've got a, you can see I've got a sort of an excess of uh, the elastic but that's fine because we can trim that off at the end so if I make it that long I think that should look pretty nice I'll tell you now exactly how long that is that is uh, 12 centimeters according to the little measuring thing on the bottom of this uh, cutting mat so 12 centimeters long that should be fine so let's get this end sewn we'll trim it up and we'll test it on the figure Here's the finished belt, so let's give this a try. I'm going to just put that around the waist. You can see there's just a little bit of uh, stretch there. I didn't want too much, but you want it to be quite a snug fit. I think that looks really good. That uh, does look much like the original belt. So I've obviously had to sacrifice one vintage Action Man belt, but I think I'm uh, perfectly happy doing that to get this figure looking nice. And as I say, I can always remake the belt if I happen to find another original. And I do say, I'm sure there is someone who makes re uh, recreations of these hooks, but uh, I'll have to sort of track those down. But uh, for the moment, that looks really good. Now we can move on to Bullet Man's helmet that uh, Alan very kindly sent me this cast of. Uh, now he does sell these casts, so if you uh, check out his Facebook page, I'll put a link in the description to that. Uh, you can get one of these if you're trying to uh, restore your vintage uh, Bullet Man figure as well. These are cast in resin, and it's uh, done in a fairly nice sort of soft resin. He said he'd put some sort of micro beads or something inside it, which makes them a bit softer. And they come with the eye holes filled in. So uh, to remove the eye hole, basically you just need a knife and a bit of patience. All I've been doing is using this knife to sort of score around the edge and sort of uh, gently cut through it. And as you can see, it can be done. You can get a very nice, neat finish. And once that's done, I've then got a little file that I've been sort of filing down some of the rough edges because a couple of these sort of edges at the bottom are a little bit rough. Not too much, but uh, enough that uh, if you take this to it you can just sort of tidy them up a bit more. So uh, I'm going to cut out this other eye hole and then we can get on with uh, getting this chromed because Bullet Man's main selling points are the fact he's got chrome arms and he has this sort of chrome bullet shaped helmet. So uh, anyway let's get this eye hole cut out and then we'll chrome this uh, to make it look just like the arms. With the eyes cut out, we can now get on and chrome it. And I'm going to be chroming uh, actually two of these because I have another one and I want to get them done in different ways. The first way we're going to do is using Molotow Liquid Chrome, which you'll have seen me use on other projects. And you actually saw me do the hands of uh, Bullet Man in the last episode using that. Now, I've had to buy myself a new uh, Molotow Liquid Chrome pen because I've noticed that something happens to them over time. You can see here I've done a little sort of test on this lid. Uh, this is my new Molotow Liquid Chrome pen. You can see it does a nice shiny finish. And this is one that I've used before and I've had it for about maybe a year and actually you can see it's starting not to give a very nice sort of shiny finish. I'm not sure why that happens over time. I do always sort of store them quite well and I shake them particularly well every time I use them but for some reason this older pen isn't giving as good a finish as uh, it was. It might be that the ink is running out, the paint is running out. So uh, I'm going to sort of just put that by for the moment. I bought myself a new one. They cost about sort of £6.50, £7 plus postage. Uh, and it's always worth sort of having one in, especially if you're doing sort of restoration projects like this. And just remember, always shake them very well before using. And uh, with Molotow pens as well, once you put a coating on it, leave it and leave it for as long as you possibly can. I know other people put a sort of top coat of some owlclad or something on it. I find if you just leave it for about four weeks it really sets rock solid and then the chrome stays a nice finish. If you touch it sort of too soon you end up leaving little marks in the chrome so uh, just leave it for a long time. So we're going to be doing this uh, bullet man head using a Molotow chrome so let's get that one done. It's going to take a little while because there's a fair amount of surface to do and it's going to be a little bit awkward to hold after a while but uh, we'll get this one done and see how it looks.
So there you go, that's the, the first coat of that on. There's a few little areas that I've missed, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry for a day or so, and then I come back and touch it up with a little bit more. You can see some bits inside the eyes I've not been able to do as well, but that's because this is a four millimeter nib pen. I have a one millimeter nib pen that will enable me to do some bits inside the eye, but overall that is a good first coating. You can see that's produced quite a nice chrome finish. So we're going to come back to that uh, in a few days time anyway, and we'll do a little bit more to it. But for now, that's a very good start. While we're waiting for the Molotov Chrome to fully set on this right hand bullet man helmet, I purchased another helmet from Alan and this one I'm going to be sending to Paul George at Gold Solutions. Now you may remember in previous videos I've shown a, a, a way of electroplating metal onto plastic and that was a kit very kindly sent to me by Paul from uh, Gold Solutions. Now I've used it quite a few times but I'm still no expert in getting a good finish and I really want to see what's the sort of the best possible finish uh, that you can get on this bullet man helmet and Paul has very kindly offered to uh, do the process for me. So this is going to be posted off to him now and uh, within a few seconds you'll see it return and I will go through the process and sort of talk you through how the plating has done. But I'm hoping that we'll get uh, two nice different versions of uh, this Bullet Man helmet. One that's been done with uh, sort of a cheaper option the Molotov chrome pens and one that's been properly uh, sort of metal chrome plated. So let's get this sent off and we'll see what that looks like when it's all done. The process starts with painting the helmet with a conductive paint. Once that's in place, you can then uh, electroform copper onto the surface uh, by uh, passing a small current through the electroforming solution. This takes about three hours. Once that's done, the item is then washed in deionized water to remove any residue. And then on top of the copper, you can plate it with nickel. This only takes a couple of minutes. Again, it's then rinsed. After that, it is then plated with a small layer of gold. And then on top of that, it is plated with rhodium. And that's what gives the final shiny appearance. And here is the finished item. On the left you have the one that I did in Molotow Chrome which has been sitting for a couple of weeks so that the uh, chrome has sort of hardened. And this is the one that uh, Paul has very kindly done for me. As you can see the finish is far superior to the pen. It's a really lovely uh, sort of shiny finish. There's no impurities left on it because uh, we're just sort of painting straight onto the surface. You can see there's a few little sort of marks in that. Uh, the electroplating process really does sort of soften those out and you end up with this lovely shiny finish. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description description as to uh, where you can get this done. Paul offers a surface under the name Iron Dice. I'll put a link to his Instagram uh, account and also his website so uh, you can get in touch with him via those if you want to have this done on the, your uh, bullet man helmet. But as you can see it does look fantastic. He offers his service. You can actually get any sort of plastic item or figure chrome. So uh, do check out his Instagram because he's got some pictures of some other items, other plastic items that he's done like this. And they all look this fantastic. The finish is just top notch. So let's try these two uh, helmets on the figure and we'll see what it looks like. First up we'll try the one that I did with uh, Molotow chrome pens just to see how that looks and there you go that is how Bullet Man looks with the Molotow chrome pen. The finish actually isn't too bad it certainly does the job and uh, because the arms on this one are pretty battered it uh, sort of matches the uh, sort of little dents and sort of marks that the arms have but let's try the uh, properly chromed one that uh, Paul very kindly did for me and we'll see how that looks. There you go that is just so much shinier. It really has got a lot of sort of nice sort of glints in that and really does look the part. The uh, plating process also makes the helmet slightly heavier because obviously you're uh, depositing a thin layer of metal all over the uh, plastic. So it's slightly heavier and it's certainly going to be a lot more sturdy. This uh, Molotow Chrome one that I did, although it looks good, it's very susceptible to being sort of marked and scratched. Uh, the metal plated one in the background really is going to last forever. So uh, yeah, the, the comparison between the two, uh, that one works, but I just think that one looks far superior. So that's it for this second part of the Bullet Man restoration. I'm really pleased with how far we've managed to get on the restoring this figure. The outfit is looking really nice now. The little emblem on the front certainly makes quite a big difference. And if you want to do that for yourself, then uh, I'm going to put this file on toyploy.com and you can download that for free. So if you want to make a Bullet Man emblem for your figure, then uh, go there and download that. It's a very easy process, as you saw. The belt works remarkably well as well. It looks really nice. And of course, we now have the fully properly chromed helmet to uh, go with this figure. And that really Really does to sort of finish it off. It just uh, looks so nice. As I say, the uh, Molotow Chrome one would have sort of worked really well, but uh, the fully chromed one there just looks absolutely lovely. So do check out Iron Dice. I'll put a link to that in the description. The last thing we need to sort out on this Bullet Man is his boots. And there are two versions of the boots. One which is just sort of a red pair of boots and another one where it has a little sort of jet on the back of it. I'm going to have to try and hunt those down. I do have a sort of backup plan in uh, using some Mego 12 inch Superman boots, which are 
cast in red and you can get some uh, replacements of those so if I can't find any boots I'm going to get some of those but hopefully at some point uh, I can find some original boots or something that I can modify to uh, make work but for now the top part of Bullet Man is looking really nice and he's certainly uh, quite displayable. Hopefully at some point we can sort out the shoes but for now I think uh, I'm just going to leave him as is because already he's looking very displayable. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.